Diesel 10 moved on to the viaduct, where he was too heavy and the trap collapsed. Pinchy managed to catch one of the sleepers of the remaining track. But it broke hey, off. Then what happened? He landed in a barge of sludge at the bottom. Then, Burnett, Lady, and I joined back with Mr. Conductor, Lily, and a few others who were with us. Mr. Conductor's cousin, Junior, an Indian Valley local boy named Patch, and his dog, Mutt. Once we did, we managed to figure out how to make more gold dust. We combined colorful shavings that Lady emitted when she was on the Magic Railroad with well water, and Lily threw it up into the air, and it turned into gold dust. Thus, Diesel 10 was defeated, Lady the Lost Engine was found, and the gold dust was replenished. I'm glad the gold dust was replenished, and that Lady was found, and especially that Diesel 10 was defeated. By now, Toby's tanks were full and the turntable was set. So then he went off to his shed. The next day, everything went well. The trains weren't late, there were no accidents, and Diesel, Ari, and Bert remained well behaved. Everything did indeed go well, that is, until that evening. Edward had finished his day's work and was resting in a siding before returning to Tidmouth. Diesel 10 had been on his mind all day, and still was now. I'm glad he's gone again. I hope he doesn't come back. But just then, who should come around the corner but Diesel 10? He was followed closely behind by Splatter and Dot. They were gone to suddenly escape. I hope he didn't see me. They didn't see him. They were too busy looking for a shed. They had tried the smelters, but the sheds were closed. Then they tried Farquhar sheds. Diesel 10 backed him into a shed, but before he was halfway in, he couldn't go wheels turn more. These sheds are too small. So they kept looking. Next they tried Natford. All the diesels were there. Diesel 10 had heard that some of the diesels were friendly to steam engines. All steamy lovers have to leave the sheds, or else. Since Boko, Mavis, and Daisy were good diesels, they admitted, not that it was bad, that they were friendly with steam engines. Diesel, Ari, and Bert had nothing to admit. Lodge, move on to the siding so that the steamy lovers can be on their way. Uh, boss, it's a splatter. A and dodge. We've been through this before. I don't have time for both names. Now, both of you, get on to a siding each so the steamy lovers only have one way to go. Away. Yes, yes sir. sir. And watch out. The sidings don't have buffers. Well, we have to go. Will we ever come back? I certainly hope so. So, one by one, the good diesels left. First Boko, then Mavis, then Daisy. And Diesel 10, Splatter, and Dodge moved into their sheds. So, let's get acquainted. I'm Diesel 10, and these are my sidekicks. I'm Splatter. Uh, I'm Dodge. And you other three are? I'm Diesel. I'm Airy. And I'm Bert. Hmm, Bert and Airy. I'll call you Barry for short. The names I have to say are increasing as they are. Diesel, you can say Diesel. So the introductions were complete. Meanwhile, the other diesels had to find places to stay. Boko stayed on a siding. Mavis slept at Farquhar. And 
and Daisy stayed in the carriage yard. While they were searching, Edward had arrived back at Tidmouth. Toby was there again. Edward was about to tell him what he had seen when Sir Topham Hatt drove up in his car. I have bad news. Diesel 10 has returned. <gasps> I've seen him. Splatter and Dodge were with him. And they've run Boko, Mavis, and Daisy out of the sheds. Now, the engines took the news surprisingly well. Okay, so they didn't take it right well. Actually, they were so panicked that Sir Topham Hat had to blow his car's horn to restore peace. Well, I'll see what I can do. The engines were very quiet after Sir Chopin Hat left. No one knew what to do. Any ideas? Well, I'd better go and investigate this matter, since I missed Boko, Daisy, and Mavis being run out, and there might be more that we should know that we don't know. Yet. <laughs> Meanwhile at Natford, Diesel 10 was plotting. Diesel, Aerie, and Bert had told him about the steam engines living at Tidna Sheds, and how much better their accommodations were than theirs. I have an idea. Then I will attack Tim the Sheds. Barry, go attack from the right. My right, the direction I'm currently facing. Squatch, go attack from the left. Diesel, go attack with me from the middle. Once the Zemers are gone, we shall take over Tidman. However, Toby arrived without anyone noticing. He listened until he caught the important news and then rushed to Tidman Sheds. He arrived just as the engines were about to be shut up for the night. He told them all about the plot, so the steam engines evacuated. Thomas slept at Farquhar with Mavis. Edward and Henry slept behind him in sheds, where the diesels couldn't see them. Gordon slept at Bradham Docks. James slept in the freight yard. And Percy stayed at Tim the sheds. He decided that with his shed being glass going from left to right, perhaps the needles would overlook it. By the time all the steam engines had been settled, the diesels had left that bird and were rushing toward the The diesels took their positions. All right, steam engines. Other shatter will make you get out. There was no answer. Okay, you asked for it. You first, Papa. What? It's empty. So is this one. Yes, every shed he checked is empty. No, why bother? All the other sheds are empty, why couldn't this one be empty? We'll try again tomorrow. And disappointed, they left. The next day, Edward brought workmen to repair the doors. The diesels tried again that night, but the sheds were empty then too. Once again, the doors were repaired. Then, that night, Percy decided he should stop taking the chance and left him in the shed to join the Mavis and Thomas at Farquhar. Good thing too, for Jesus had finally checked his shed, only to find it in <laughs> Then the diesels returned to the shed. I've come to a conclusion. As soon as we can't catch the Seamus at night, we'll catch him during the day, starting tomorrow. Until then, I'm going to shed. <laughs>